The Go-Giver by Bog Berg and John David Mann. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel and I want to make self-growth normal. If you want to make self-growth normal because I don't want to do it alone. Who doesn't want to make self-growth normal? Then make sure to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. That was with ranking and SEO and all this other stuff and I really appreciate it because so much work goes into making these videos. You'd be surprised. A lot of work really does go into making these videos. There's a perhaps touching foreword by Ariana Huffington about how the book crushes the notion that the more you have, the more you have the ability to give. As if you really need the resources in order to distribute them for free. And this book uh, tells a story that validates for its readers and or listeners the opposite. Where there are a great deal of things beyond the surface of what we see every day in exchange, in terms of exchange the market. Sales, negotiation, persuasion, marketing, communications, etc. And the authors will stress this violently in the intro, only to stress it subtly throughout the book. Now, although I think this is some quality storytelling, I think the richness, the depth of the story itself and everything, that's not worth spoiling. But I'll give a super brief summary of the story, or at least the synopsis of like the problem that happens without spilling any major tea. Or what have my younger fellow Gen Z's. There's a guy named Joe. He's having a lot of trouble meeting this quota at work and he doesn't know what to do so he ends up seeking consulting from a very successful name, man named Pindar. He explains to Joe throughout the very five days his stratospheric law success like what the five laws of stratospheric success and the rest I want to say is history, but I honestly don't know how true this story is. It's so popular in self-help. It's so popular in self-help and business, and it's a quickie. That's what she said. So again, it's constantly lumped into the non-fiction, the rest of the non-fiction books, like like The Alchemist is. <laughs> and what I want to talk about, specifically for my viewers at least, I try to get the main juice. Like what to look out for so you guys can hopefully get the most out of these books for yourselves. Get as much value as possible, like squeeze the juice out of it. So here's a summary of the five laws of stratospheric success from Pindar, the businessman Consulting chairperson guy. Bingo giver. Law one is the law of value. Your true worth is determined by how much more you give in value than you take in payment. Have you ever thought about this? Law two might amplify your understanding of it. It definitely amplified mine. But law one puts this sort of pressure on you to straight up give. A great way to do this is definitely by smashing that like button if you haven't done so already. But if you want to take, or at least get, then I think it's a good idea to kind of start by putting pressure on yourself to give relentlessly. It forces you to flip the switch, flip what you thought was the actual way things worked. It's just an unorthodox avenue of thought that successful people and companies often find themselves crawling through only to walk, then run, and eventually fly above. Law two is the law of compensation. Your income is determined by how well you, how many people you serve and how well you serve them. One word that comes to mind for me is scalability. Like, look at influencers. That's a huge thing right now. It's also what she said. It's culture hacking, but it's where you take up a considerable space in someone's mind and they watch your content regularly. A phenomenal explanation of this is like a lot of people are mystified by the wealths of major actors and athletes. But movies and sports are things that create valuable memories. Owners of successful restaurants, creators of experiences. Venue owners, they, they build large volumes of data in our minds. It can be small or large data, but what matters is that it is well you know, delivered and it is in lots of minds. Why are the most stratospherically successful companies that way? They do microeconomic examples Sugar Aww, girls. Aww. of what parents, teachers, police, social workers, etc. What they do except and more, except on massive scales, but like instead of 10 to 50 people a day, it's millions maybe billions. Law three is the law of influence. Your influence is determined by how abundantly you place the interests of other people first. Probably the richest and most charismatic CEOs and politicians and thought leaders, are they're just 
Almost too selfless. Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Elon Musk, Sam Walton, Bill Clinton, Pope Francis, Martin Luther King Jr., the Dalai Lama, Gandhi. These other people put other, their, the interests of others in front of their own. I think Tony Robbins, other very influential person, a hero of mine, is the one who said to treat the other person as the end, not the means, but the end. Law 4 is, I think this one's probably my favorite, the law of maybe just re relatively, relationally? The law of authenticity, the most valuable gift you have, gift that you have to offer is yourself. You ever have moments where you just, you're just very, very open or honest and it seems like you poured your heart out to someone, some stranger, or on a first date? Maybe someone whose opinion of you, you highly value, like a boss or a mentor or an influencer. And you're worried what they think, but at the same time, you just, you really have a lot on your mind. But they're ultimately okay with it. In fact, they actually reward you with some sort of praise, admiration, increase of respect for you. That comes from authenticity. I don't think there are a lot of particular strengths of mine. I think the strengths of mine are very, very, very strong, but I don't think there are that many. And like a lot of people, a lot of people are like that. But I do think in terms of strengths, for, for me at least, I think authenticity is one of them because, you know, it comes down in a way to what you value. The way I see it, inauthenticity, in, inauthenticity is such a huge problem in society. It causes so much mistrust and polarity and judgment and people are sick of it. I treat it like a terminal disease. Maybe that's just my philosophy. I don't mean to brag. Again, we all have our flaws. But law five is the law of receptivity. The key to effective giving is to stay open to receiving. And I know what you're thinking. I know what you might be thinking. In the Q&A at the end of the audiobook, the authors confirmed it. This is the most common one that people have problems with. Oh my gosh, I suck at receiving because it just makes you feel a little guilty. You know what I mean? But if you know the, the importance uh, and you can keep it in mind of uh, reciprocity, uh, it, it gives you a sense of imbalance. If you are giving and giving excuse me, and expecting yourself not to even hope to get anything in return. I mean, it's messed up, but it's a result of largely of, of social conditioning. And so is watching a video and not smashing the like button if you haven't already. So as you can see, there's like a series of points that the book is meant to make. The authors use this kind of story to thread them together and get them through to the reader or listener. It's like the richest man in Babylon of spiritual business approaches. Obviously, it's far more modern, and these guys did kill the concept. However, with kindness, they went and they gave, quotes. Actually, successful people do this all the time. Typically, the more successful they are, the more willing they are to share their secrets to others. Trying to make success your goal by making money is like trying to travel on the highway at 70 miles an hour when reverse with your eyes glued to the mirror. Sometimes you feel foolish, you even look foolish, but you do the thing anyway. When you base your relationships in business or anywhere else in life on who owes who what, that's not being a friend, that's being a creditor. A genuinely sound business principle but would apply anywhere in life. It's not better to give than to receive. It's insane to try to give and not receive. Direction one. I recommend this book for anyone who is feeling lost, especially in an economy that is flooded with collective minds of scarcity and chaos. Direction two. If you like this book, I recommend checking out The Alchemist by is that guy's name Paulo Coelho? And The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak Chopra. The Go-Giver by Bob Berg and John David Mann. There's a link in the description if you guys want to check it out and read the reviews. That and all the other books that I mentioned in this video if you want to check those out too. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review, please let me know in the comments below. Also let me know if you checked out this book and you liked it. But hey, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, because I don't get why people watch this far into my videos and they don't subscribe, but if you have subscribed and you want to turn it up just a notch and turn on that notification bell to receive a notification every time I drop a new video, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.